Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about pulmonary embolism on a CT scan. On the left, we have an image showing the normal pulmonary artery. The image is in the axial plane. It is a contrast-enhanced CT image. This structure is the main pulmonary artery, or the pulmonary trunk. And in this slice, we can also see the right pulmonary artery. This is the right pulmonary artery. These two round structures in cross-section are the ascending and the descending aorta. This vessel beside the ascending aorta is the superior vena cava. Pulmonary embolism is the occlusion of pulmonary arteries. The occlusion can be partial or complete. In contrast enhanced CT, a pulmonary embolism appears as a low density filling defect in the pulmonary artery. This filling defect is the thrombus. In a normal pulmonary artery, we do not see any low density filling defect. There is normal contrast enhancement of the lumen. This is how it normally appears. But in this image, a low density filling defect is present in the pulmonary artery. This indicates pulmonary embolism. Here is a coronal view showing the normal heart and normal pulmonary vessels. The only chamber visible in this slice is the left atrium. We can see both the right and left pulmonary arteries in this slice. These two vessels below the left pulmonary artery are the left pulmonary veins. The upper one is the left superior pulmonary vein, and the lower one is the left inferior pulmonary vein. Similarly, we can see the right superior pulmonary vein, just below the right pulmonary artery. We see normal contrast enhancement in both the arteries. In the image on the right, we can see the filling defects in the right pulmonary artery and its branches. This low density area is the filling defect. A filling defect is also present in the right superior lobe pulmonary artery. In this image, we can see filling defects in both the left and right pulmonary arteries. You can see how the normal contrast enhanced left pulmonary artery appears. There is no filling defect. It has a normal enhancement. Similarly, the right pulmonary artery also has a normal enhancement with no low density filling defects in its lumen. Whereas in this image, you can see many low density filling defects. The entire lumen is occluded. Complete occlusion of the artery can indicate pulmonary infarction. In this image, you can see the normal pulmonary trunk and both the right and left pulmonary arteries in one slice. In a saddle embolism, a large embolus is seen extending from the left pulmonary artery to the right pulmonary artery. The embolus will form a bridge-like structure, which is present in both pulmonary arteries. Here is another image showing a saddle pulmonary embolism. You can see a large low density embolus extending from the left pulmonary artery to the right pulmonary artery. Here is an image showing a low density filling defect in a right pulmonary artery branch. Normally the branches show enhancement with contrast. They appear bright but here they don't show enhancement. We are currently looking at acute cases of pulmonary embolism. A polo mint sign is seen in cases of acute embolism. In this sign, a thin rim of contrast, a thin bright border is seen around the low density embolus. This is the polo mint sign. A dark embolus is surrounded by a bright rim of contrast enhancement. Here is another example showing a polo mint sign. You can see a low density embolus or filling defect surrounded by a high density bright contrast enhancement. The railway track sign is another sign seen in acute pulmonary embolism. In this sign, 
the embolus appears as a linear filling defect in the center of the vessel. This embolus is surrounded by parallel lines of contrast. This appearance is similar to the tracks of a railway. So, a linear embolus is surrounded by two bright, hyperdense parallel lines of contrast medium. This appearance is called the railway track sign. The embolus is seen in three locations in this image. There is a polo mint sign on the left side, a railway track sign on the right, and an occlusion is present as well. Here's another image showing the railway track sign, as well as filling defects present in the branches of the right pulmonary artery. Now we will look at the effects of acute pulmonary embolism on the heart. In severe cases, dilatation of the right heart may be present. There will be enlargement of the right atrium and ventricle. This is how the normal right atrium and ventricle appear on CT. The right ventricle transverse diameter is less than 6 cm. It is the greatest horizontal diameter that can be measured. When there is enlargement of the right atrium and ventricle, the transverse diameter will be greater than 6 cm. Also, there will be displacement of the interventricular septum towards the left ventricle. The right heart appears larger than the left heart. This feature is associated with pulmonary hypertension, which was caused by pulmonary embolism. Now we will look at chronic cases of pulmonary embolism. These are embolisms which haven't completely resolved. Enlargement of the pulmonary trunk is seen in chronic cases of pulmonary embolism. The normal diameter of the main pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk is less than 30 millimeters. The normal diameter of the right pulmonary artery is usually less than 19.9 millimeters, approximately, and the normal diameter of the left pulmonary artery is less than 22 millimeters, approximately. When there is enlargement of the main pulmonary artery, its diameter will be greater than 30 millimeters. We can also see filling defects in both the pulmonary arteries. We may also find collateral vessels in chronic cases. These are the collateral vessels seen near the bronchi and the descending aorta. These vessels are not present in the normal image. Also, there is a large filling defect present. This is a coronal image showing a dilated pulmonary artery with an embolus present as a filling defect in its lumen causing vessel wall irregularity. You may also find tortuous branches of the pulmonary artery. Instead of appearing straight, as in normal cases, they will appear curved and bent. This is a CT image without contrast. Presence of a hyperdense calcified thrombus can be seen in the pulmonary artery in chronic cases of embolism. It is much easier to see the calcified thrombus in a plain image. Here's another image showing a hyperdense calcified thrombus in the right pulmonary artery. This is also a CT image without contrast. Along with these hyperdense clots, you will also find subtle hypodense clots as well. In a plain image, these areas are slightly darker than the surrounding areas. Such dark, hypodense areas are usually seen in chronic pulmonary embolism. Here is an image showing pulmonary arterial wall irregularities. It is more prominent in the left pulmonary artery. The main pulmonary artery was dilated. Sometimes there is a presence of thin, hypodense lines or web-like structures in the lumen. These are called pulmonary arterial webs. These are seen in chronic pulmonary embolism. In severe cases of acute embolism, we saw that both the right atrium and ventricle can become dilated. In chronic cases, we will find dilated right atrium and ventricle as well as increased right ventricle wall thickness.
The normal thickness is less than 5 mm, approximately. In this case, the right ventricle thickness is increased. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.